Okay, a long, long time ago, I did a video where I talked about how to fuse cremains into glass. Um, it was not a demonstration video because um, I was dealing with human cremains and I just wanted to be respectful of that. Um, I've had now a number of folks uh, asking me questions and I've gotten some new commissions and so I thought I would film another video. Now this one I got permission. Um, a woman asked me to um, create some pieces with um, cremains from three of her dogs. And so um, these are not human ashes, they are canine, and I know that they are also part of our family, but um, I asked permission and she said, sure, no problem. So I thought I would just show you the process um, a little bit step-by-step step in, in how I do it. Um, there are lots of ways to do this and many artists have different approaches and I, and I love that. This is how I do it. And so uh, I thought I would start and show you that. So um, we're going to um, you know, get pretty technical here. This may end up being a little bit of a long video. She has asked for ashes in two different molds. Um, she wants, hang on just a second. I bought this off of eBay years ago, but it's paw prints. So she wants um, each dog in a paw print and then uh, also some hearts, kind of medium sized hearts. And so I'll show you that process in a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is start with the ashes first. So um, this here is Sam. Now, <laughs> I usually tell folks I don't need all the ashes, I just need a little bit, um, like a half of a teaspoon kind of thing. I mean, it obviously depends on the size of your project, but for these little guys, you don't need much ash um, for the little projects that she wants to do. But um, I also respect that people don't necessarily want to deal with ashes uh, or cremains, um, you know, personally or directly. So, um, and and these folks that I work with are largely local. I still haven't had anybody ship me cremains, but if you're in the United States, you have to pay really close attention. I think the only approved way to ship cremains is through the United States Postal Service, and there's a very specific um, uh, service that you have to use in order to do that. So what I am doing though is local. So she dropped them off. Uh, I usually say a half of a teaspoon to a teaspoon in a Ziploc baggie is fine, um, but uh, she didn't want to mess with that, so she brought me the whole um, the whole uh, box uh, times three. I've got three dogs. Um, so anyway, the other thing that I always tell my clients is that you know I really strive to have a perfect product or as close to perfect as possible. Um, my goal is also to return to them 100% of the cremains that they bring me. So she's going to get her whole box back, uh, obviously. She's going to get any of the unused ashes that I don't use back. Now, I haven't crossed this yet. I did. I, we actually do live really close to a pet cemetery, a really nice park. Um, so I've offered in the past, if somebody you know doesn't want them back, I'd be happy to scatter them you know, for them. But uh, that's not come up yet. I've always um, asked for them or, you know, everybody's asked for them back. So uh, what I've got here is a box of ashes. And I, my process is, I will mask up for this, but uh, since I'm talking, I'm gonna leave the mask off right now. Uh, I will take, I have a, a dedicated uh, sifter and I'm gonna sift the ashes. And the reason that I do that is you're gonna see there are some larger pieces in here, um, larger fragments, bone fragments, I, I presume, maybe teeth. Um, the larger the piece, the bigger the bubbles that you're going to get. They're going to kind of gas off. And so my approach to this um, is always to do uh, multiple firings. The first firing is just the ash by itself. No glass, just the ashes to allow for them to gas off at full fuse temperatures as much as possible. And then I will use the material in glass, hoping that I get fewer bubbles in the end. And that's worked fairly well for me. So this first process is just to fuse, pre-fuse. Uh, the ashes. So I've got a little bit of a kiln shelf, uh, just a tile. Um, this does not have to be kiln washed. Um, in fact, I would prefer it not to be because then I don't get um, kiln wash in there. And uh, because ash isn't going to stick uh, to this uh, kiln shelf. And so what I also have is a sheet of paper here. So I'm going to sift some of the ashes so that I get the, the finer powder, the finer bits uh, on, and you can use any kind of sifter. This is just, you know, I have one that I have um, you know, everybody, a lot of people have these in their studio uh, for glass powders. Uh, I've dedicated one uh, for cremains. So anyway, I'm going to um, sift some material onto the paper and then, uh, you know, make a little pile here for, for Sam. I'm going to end up doing all three dogs on the same uh, tile. And I've got a, uh, a note off to the side here with kind of a map of where I'm putting Sam and Roxy and Leo. Um, and, uh, and then I know, of course, and can keep separate which is which. So 
for the purposes of Sam here, um, when you open the box, I mean, of course, everybody's going to be different, but you have a, um, a tied up baggie. So I'm going to open this bag carefully. I'm really not even going to take this thing out. Um, I'm just going to open it up and get some material out of it and then uh, close it up again. So, and then I, and then I will leave it accessible so that I can um, put uh, what I don't use back in. So I don't know if you can see, but there are some larger fragments in here and then some powder. Um, and I, I truly, I don't need very much. So I'm just gonna get kind of the smallest amount. Okay, I'm gonna put you on pause here so that I can mask up. Okay, I'm sorry that you can't hear me very well. It's always my intention to treat this uh, just like I do glass powder. I just don't want to inhale it. And so I'm going to tap this out. As you can see, I've got much finer particles here, and then I've got larger pieces that remain. I really don't need much more than that, to be honest, between she wants um, two pieces total, three pieces total. So I'll go ahead and sift out a little bit more, but the reality is I don't need too much. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deposit this, you can't see this, back into the bag, knock it off as best as I can. Somebody's gonna argue, well, there's a little bit of residual powder in there, and I guess you're right. Um, but I will take a dry brush uh, off camera and I'll kind of brush this out. And then I feel like I've respected this as much as, as I can. And so for the purposes of Sam now, so now I've got a little bit of Sam on the tile and I will do the same with Roxy and with Leo. And then I'll do a full fuse. Let me put this on pause and take my mask off. Okay, I'm back. So I'm gonna do the same with the other two um, dogs. Now, I don't usually do kind of three at a time, but uh, it's not hard. There's not a, uh, you know, I just have to pay very close attention to what I'm doing and kind of keep these things uh, mapped out and I'll be fine. So um, I am going to do the other two and I'll just lay this in on my kiln shelf and do a full fuse. Um, there are other things that are going into this uh, load and that's fine. Like I'm not worried about this, I don't know, creating the vitrification on other pieces. I, it's it's um, it's heavy material. It's it's almost like sand. Um, that's probably the best way I can describe it. And um, so it's not going <clears> to <throat> powder off. I mean, obviously I'm going to be careful, and I don't want to you know stiff wind or anything. But um, you know this will stay on the shelf, and it'll stay uh, separate from all the other glass. So I don't mind full fusing it with another load. Okay. So now here's again something that I do that might be different than what other fusing artists do. But those ashes are are heavy, and I think they kind of can either tend to sink or glass, they can stay there, and glass, if it's not capped uh, deep enough, can kind of roll around it and expose that, and I want it fully fused in. So of the paw prints, she said she wanted, um, she wants two of each. She wants um, blue and red and turquoise colors uh, for each different dog. And so uh, I believe Sam, let me double check. Yes, Sam was going to be red. And so what I'm going to do is, I mentioned having other things in that full fuse. This is going to be one of them. I'm going to take, now this is um, a confetti mix from Tabitha. You've seen me feature her stuff a lot of times before, and her confetti is awesome. So I'm going to take some scoops of confetti and put some in these molds. And I'm going to do a full fuse, and it's going to become now my base layer. So my intention is to not fill these molds and get a hundred percent, you know, big paw print. What's going to happen is it's going to shrink in and give me kind of a medium-ish small uh, paw print, but that will be enough to create a solid base layer that then I can put the ashes on and then cap again with more glass. And then hopefully in this two-step process, I've got a solid base so that the ashes don't fall down through and then I can put enough glass on the top to give me a nice um, full casting. So I'm just gonna take a little scoop tool and I'm going to fill two of these with reds. I've got some blues that I need to crush up and then I'll fire those and then I'll have to come back and do the, the turquoise color because I only have one mold. 
Okay, I told you I would have other things in the kiln load. So there is Sam, Roxy, and Leo. Uh, the start of some of their paw prints. She also wanted hearts. So I've got some frit mix into a heart mold here. Um, and then these are just other molds to fill up and go ahead and run while I had a full fuse going. So those have nothing to do with that project. And then this will be another video sometime else in the future. But, you know, trying to maximize, I may even throw a few other things in here since I've got plenty of space, but my kiln does not cost me much electricity to fire. So I, I rarely have guilt when I'm firing a load that's this small, but uh, I'll probably go ahead and do a little bit more in here as well. But just wanted to show you uh, their, they are and their pieces. And uh, we'll do a full fuse on this and I'll post the schedule. Okay, so for the um, actual pieces themselves, they requested paw prints, two paw prints for each dog, and then one heart for each dog. And the paw prints, they said um, they'd prefer not to necessarily see the um, see the the ashes so um, obviously. And on the hearts, they were fine with doing a little bit more transparency and seeing that. I think it's because. Uh, she wants the hearts and he wants the paw prints, and I don't think that he felt great about seeing the ashes. So uh, that means I have to take two different approaches here with kind of my glass and what I'm going to do. What it, you'll see is I'm going to fill these up and I'm going to fire the frit to a very soft um, contour or, or even a, a more of a tack fuse to kind of get that frit to close up, but not to fully fuse and seize up as frit can tend to do. I just want to create a frit base, a frit layer that gives me a foundation by which I can then build, um, but not have um, have it, you know, fire up so so um, significantly. I'll show you what I mean in in, uh, in just a bit. So what I'm going to do first is I have some clear transparent medium frit. Now I don't like to use a ton of clear uh, in a thick layer because it creates bubbles and makes it very. Um, uh, cloudy looking but what you can do with a thin layer of clear is just create another um, little bit of depth to the glass and um, in this case an extra layer of protection and glass um, since I'm using so very little here I want there to be a very solid layer of frit but not again fully fused up and so clear can help um, add a little bit of volume to the bottom here um, and just uh, pr provide some insurance if you will that I've got a nice solid floor on which to build my um, my pieces later with the cremains. Um, the difference, the other thing I have to keep in mind for me with these molds is the uh, paw prints here, the face of this um, is actually the front. Uh, so the bottom is the front and on the hearts, it's the opposite. On the hearts, the, the bottom becomes the back or the, so, um, in this case, I'm trying to build it face down and uh, that clear would give me, um, you know, kind of a nice face to the to the finished pieces. So um, hopefully this will make more sense later in the video. I'm just going to go ahead and put a light layer of clear across the rest of these and then I'll show you the next step. Now, uh, again, because they don't want to see the ashes in the paw prints, but do in the hearts, I end up needing kind of two different frit mixes. And so I've made up some frit mixes here for the paw prints. I'll just show you. Um, I'm not going to go into all the different colors I used because I don't know that that matters in the end. But for Sam, they wanted something that was kind of reddish. And so I had a couple different colors of red. This is all medium frit. I had a couple of colors of red. I added a um, a, a yellow and a, a, I think, pumpkin orange to that just to give a little bit of variation and something different. For Leo, they wanted it in the blue family, and so uh, I used some Caribbean blue and white opal frit that I had. Uh, that's a it's a, a mix that's been turned into frit. Um, I had some steel blue, which I thought could look kind of cool, particularly since I think um, he's going to carry these once that steel blue fires into that steel color. That could look kind of neat. Uh, also, it would be um, opalescent. And then um, some aventurine. I wish I had medium in aventurine. I only had fine for it. So I'm, I think that that's going to kind of sink to the bottom, but that, that might be okay. Cause again, the bottom is going to be the top on these. And then uh, for Roxy, they wanted kind of teals. Uh, and so I used some teal green and some turquoise blue and some um, uh, glacier blue. And, you know, I just kind of made up my own, um, my own proportions here and mixed those up. So these are what I'm going to put into the paw prints. I have to fire this a couple times because I only have one of these molds and they need six pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do two reds and two blues and then I'll, you know, come back and do the turquoise in another firing. 
for the hearts, different frit mixes because I can use a little bit more transparent. So same thing, I just mixed those up and had some fun with those. So what I'm gonna do now is just, I'll demonstrate here with the frit mix for Sam. So now kind of like the clear, I'm just going to lay down as much as possible a thin layer that, you know, fully closes all the gaps and kind of sinks in, but I don't want it to be too deep. And um, what my hope is, is that when I fire this, then what I get is a nice um, layer of kind of solid-ish glass. This is gonna be chunky in its um, texture because I'm gonna do a light uh, fuse on it, but it will not have gaps in it and the um, ashes can stay to the top. Now, another way to avoid this if your molds were bigger, mine just aren't very big, is to pre-fuse the ashes between two sheets of glass, like do a little dot, basically, if you're familiar with doing a full fuse of a, of a piece of glass or uh, two of them and kind of create a, a baby or a dot. Um, that would be one way to do it. And then to insert that into this, um, I guess I could have done that, but um, I don't know, I'm teaching you this approach. Okay, so I'm going to continue to line these with my frit and uh, again a very shallow layer here um, never enough that you would do on a full fuse of this mold but exactly what i want for kind of a pre-firing uh, for cremains okay here's all of these um, frit bases i'm going to fire this for 1350 for about 10 minutes and that's it so let's see what they look like when they come out all right, so I fired these and um, generally I'm pretty pleased. So a couple of thoughts. Um, I absolutely mapped out which one was Sam, Roxy, and Leo on my tile here. And then after they came out of the firing, I immediately labeled them because I do not trust my memory. Um, and if I turn my tile around or something, get myself confused. So I want to um, not do that. So I've labeled them just with a little painter's tape so I know which is which. On the firings, I probably could have done a little bit more frit. Um, some of these look really, really good and um, relatively solid, uh, but I see a little hole in a few of these. But never fear, that's okay. This is going to work anyway because my intention, and actually on the paw prints, there's a few more gaps than what I would have intended or what I would have, blah, what I would have wanted, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do now is I've got little bits of Tecta that I've chopped up and uh, I, I like to just keep this stuff handy. Um, and so I'm gonna pick a piece and what I'll show you next is put it by my pet here. And then I've got, this is just a little straw that I've cut off to be a little bit of a scoop tool uh, with, the, um, with a paintbrush. And just kind of go in, so in this case, this is Roxy and they want Roxy to be um, the uh, turquoise color, I believe. Let me check my notes just to make sure. Yes, Roxy is the turquoise color. And so for instance, with these, um, that's the, these two hearts here. And so what my intention is, is to scoop up just a bit and put it can you see this okay? Oh, it's a little off camera. I'll be very careful with what I'm doing here. Let's see if I can also zoom in. Uh, anyway, I'll get I'll get that in editing. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to just put a little bit of the cremains here on this piece of Tecta. And then what I'm going to do, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna kind of spread it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to use my favorite adhesive, which is just a good old fashioned cheap hairspray in a needle nose bottle. And I'm going to basically apply drops to this, not too much. But what I'm trying to do is saturate that onto this piece of Tecta. And I'm gonna let that dry and get relatively hard. And then I'm gonna place this piece of Tecta into my mold on top of my hearts here. Remember, this is gonna be um, the, the, the top of the heart. So I'm gonna put that in and when it's dry, do that. And it'll, it's just gonna sit on top of this frit 
and then I'm going to cover it with the rest of my frit mix and pile that up and put it in for a full fuse. So the intention here, and this is just the way I do it. Look, there's probably a bajillion ways to consider to do this, but the way that I want to try to do this is to make sure that when I go to do my final full fuse firing on this, um, I am not going to see any of the ash fall to the bottom or rise to the top or that glass to separate off the ash and open up and create empty or, uh, you know, ash. I want this to be as solid as possible and all contained. And so I'm taking multiple steps and deep, deep care to have a successful firing right off the bat because I don't want to, um, you know, I don't want to risk, uh, you know, having a dud. Um, so that's the way I'm approaching it. So I'm going to do these little pieces of Tecta for the hearts and for the paw prints. So ultimately I need six of these for each, excuse me, six total. Uh, no, three total. <laughs> Ooh, it's been a long day. I need nine total, three for each dog. So I'm going to do three for each dog. As you can see, I'll probably have some uh, you know, because if I do each piece about this size, I'm going to have a little bit of remaining. And I, because I have it sorted, I know which baggie to put it back into to return all the cremains uh, back to their owner. So I'm going to um, make my uh, pieces of Tecta here and uh, put the hairspray on and let them dry. All right, I wanted to explain these a little bit. You saw me use some of Tabitha's confetti and melt those down. They um, they pulled together and made these like nuggets, which um, did not really uh, represent what I was hoping for. So what I've done is uh, the piece of Tecta that has the ash in it is down buried within. I have then surrounded it with frit and then uh, I've just capped it with this big chunk of glass. It'll just help uh, uh, ooze out and fill in these paw prints um, and uh, and cap the uh, pieces that are in there. Uh, so they look kind of silly now, but after a full fuse, it should all become one and, and look actually quite nice. So if you're wondering what, what was I doing with those, um, they didn't fuse exactly how I had thought. And so um, instead they're gonna become uh, caps for the back of these paw prints. Okay, similar to the paw prints, I actually made two of these um, little heart pucks, even though I only needed one heart of each. And so uh, I just uh, put that piece of Tecta with the cremains inside. I surrounded it with frit, and then I just capped them with those second uh, heart firings uh, just to add some more glass. It's all the same anyway, uh, and it'll all do a full fuse. And so that was the way in which I used those. Uh, I did double hearts just to kind of hedge my bets. Um, and in this case, I was able to just use that same glass to, uh, to cap these off. They are done and they turned out quite well. So um, I uh, fired those in a full fuse. The schedules are always in my uh, video notes, so you can go look for that. I did decide, uh, because the paw prints were face down, I did decide to flip them and do a fire polish. And so um, I did that on, on the paw prints. I'm very pleased with these. So um, again, the uh, request was to not to see the ashes within the um, paw prints themselves. And so here were the, the deep blues, the aventurine kind of midnight blues. Um, this was the chunk that was on the back that um, then you know spread out quite nicely and makes for a very interesting back. And um, for the request of the heart, uh, here is that. I'm getting a mess on it. You probably can't see this. So when you hold it up to the light, it's got really pretty uh, kind of blues and uh, and you can see the ashes. It's easier to see from the back. You can see the ashes there in the middle, nicely sealed, completely encased, no bubbles. The red, same thing, kind of a different front than you get on the back. So I used those um, kind of blobs that had the confetti. Those spread out nicely across the back and give an interesting look. Um, there's a little bit of white in here. That's not ashes. That's just white that was in the streaky glass and uh, the heart. Uh, turned out quite nice. You can see um, just a little bit the ashes on the front. Um, I know you can kind of see it on the back, but they're there. Again, this probably doesn't show up on video very well. And then the ones that they wanted that were kind of turquoise color, um, here those are. Again, you can't see the ashes inside there. And uh, I use transparents for the heart so you can see it in there. 
uh, maybe a little bit as well. So very pleased, no major bubbles, no big eruptions. Every single um, kind of bit of ash ended up in the glass or back into the original containers. I'm giving them back to the owner. I hope that she loves them. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you learned a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes the process takes a little bit of twists and turns. As I found, I didn't use enough glass to kind of give me the look that I was looking for with the confetti, but I ended up using it anyway on the back. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think the process would be the same if I were doing any human cremains. Um, and, you know, if I had a request to do it in a pendant or, um, you know, cufflinks or a little uh, brooch or something, or even something larger like a, a paperweight, um, <clears throat> I would take the same approach. I would pre-fire the cremains. I would certainly treat them with tender loving care, just as I do with these. Um, I would try to eliminate bubbles. I ask the um, recipient, do they want to see the ashes? Do they not? Um, maybe do they want me to mix a little mica with it to give it a little bit of sparkle? Um, dichro, there's just a lot of options. And so it's always great to have a nice consultation with somebody and kind of talk through what it is uh, that's going to make them happiness and bring them some peace. So again, I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and uh, turn on your notifications so that you get uh, notifications about new videos coming. I hope everybody's doing well and take care. Bye. Thank you.